Hello, Hare Krishna. My name is Jwala Mukidasi, and I'm here continuing my J-File series. I believe this is number 32 in the series, My Hoo and the Destiny of the Universe, The Golden Age, The Great Sinister Movement, and The Firewalk of a Hare Krishna Kid. It has been many months since I have made another entry, essentially my um, video journal. And I guess I've just been busy with life and five kids and, of course, you know, all the insanity that's going on. In the world today I've been absorbed in other things but recently I've had some exchanges with some very old friends I haven't talked to in many many years and they came across my videos and I feel more enlivened to continue the series there will be an end to it at one point um, it is a journal so I'm sharing with the world whoever wants to hear my ongoing process of waking up and my revelations my self-realization which of course continues forever. It's the never-ending story of the soul until we are back home where we belong with the Lord of the universe, Lord Jagannath, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, and all of his many, many expansions and different forms. Anyways, um, so I'll have to find a good stopping point for these videos, but really what I want to offer my audience is a happy ending. People have found Krishna Consciousness after so long. And finally, the heart has a place to repose itself. And then you find out about all, about all of the negativity and the organization and the scandals and the abuse. And then the faith takes a big hit. And then you're somewhere in the world sitting and going, what did I just spend, you know, the last decade or two or three or four or five doing? And... So my journey is to catalog the map of what happened there and how we can, as an individual, take our power back from what was done in Srila Prabhupada's name and really practice Bhakti Yoga, the connection of love of Godhead, without feeling that we have to be part of a corrupt organization, but really be part of the mission of the Lord in these incredibly urgent times to preach the Lord's message, we are in spiritual warfare. So that is the purpose of my video blog, to give hope, not more than hope, but um, to give a, a practical example of how to come out of the darkest of evil, shinier than ever. And I'm hoping that my audience will see in my person that shininess. I'm not trying to say that to toot my own horn, but to just show that it can be done course by the mercy of my mentor my teacher my spiritual master Kamra Devi and of course you can see her video blog that she's put up there's been a 10-part series that she did on purely prabhupad.org you can see that and uh, we're trying to put out more and more kirtans home kirtans they're humble and homemade but trying to get the holy name out there because that's the only thing that will wake people up all the way people think they're waking up they have no idea so here, I'm going to grab my computer, and I'm just going to continue reading. This is still back from 2011, so we have a ways to go, and I will find a good stopping point. But really, this is, um, you know, the, the rude awakening, getting into the thick of it, getting a hang of the process, and hopefully I'll end it on um, a good stopping point that shows the joy on the other side, and really burning in love of Godhead where there is no duality and we win because we stepped out all the way. Transcendence. So here we are, uh, beginning of number, video number 32. This is dated uh, November 30th, 2011. <laughs> I feel so happy and satisfied in my life. Like right now I'm going back and looking at these entries and not uh, well, they're all like heavy things so I'm going back and reading them but I, I hope that you as an audience can understand that um, there is definitely light at the end of the tunnel no matter what you're dealing with and it's really a matter of meeting a bona fide spiritual master and receiving the transcendental science of who you really are out of the the bad dream of this illusory energy I mean, it's real, it's not false, but it's temporary. And our natural state is sat, 
Chit and Ananda. Eternity, knowledge, and bliss. So here we go. This is the journey. One of my uh, t-shirt slogans is, be the soul and shed the story. Or more accurately, transmute, transform the story. I had ghost dreams all night on the topic of baby murder, sex, and possession. I tried to go back to sleep, but it continued. I am playing the melody to my, quote, remember, or the sound of my surrender song on the piano to try to release the tears and the fear. Not working, I repeat. In the past, I have given a lot of power to fear. I no longer give any more power to the energy of fear. Fear is present, but I am not afraid. Please work, please work. Repeat, repeat. My session started today, this morning already, and my appointment isn't for another 15 minutes. I need more connection to God, to joy. I feel I am sinking in an ocean of fear and sorrow. Hold on to the vision, to the gems of eternity, I have been shown in my heart. Hold on, I tell myself. In last week's session, I saw that my relative really did rape and murder Beth, technically. I mean, that's a code name for her, but technically speaking, the entities that inhabited his body did it, but try explaining that to a judge. Ha! Of course, as an aside, um, you know, the satanic cabal runs the entire judicial system, the entire, all the, the entire world is run by these man-eating demons. So if one of their own gets um, somehow or miraculously held to some kind of, you know, man-made law accountability, they just let them off. There's no real justice. Some, you know, people have asked me, oh, why don't you go to the authorities? tell them about all of these horrible things that have happened and I'm like yeah right <laughs> yeah right if you only knew my dear naive innocent person you 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 have no idea I mean one day there will come a time when the high court judges all wear tilak Vaishnava tilak on their foreheads and Srila Prabhupada was quoted as saying that we will see that in our lifetime so I do believe that is coming and there shall be real justice like when the magistrate, uh, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, our Acharya in our lineage, he would see many, many cases every day and he would make very sound and wise judgments, but very quickly. So that day is coming where there will be honest government, but right now is definitely not the case. So here we are, my, my uh, sarcastic joke. Try explaining that to a judge, ha. Huh. The desire to come, the desire to die came into me then, I could see. Kamra said, it is what is called survivor guilt. I wished that he would have killed me also. That way, I would not be feeling the living nightmare that I am experiencing. Then again, I would also not have the beautiful boys, my gentle husband, true friends, the truth. It's just so hard to see all the beauty in my life when I am in the soup. That's what I call it when I'm in deep process and all of the stuff that's stored in the tissues is coming out. It's like, you know, all of the realizations that I'm given go out the window when you're having body memories and when you're in the middle of your body just like expelling all of the toxic suppressed crap of not just from early life, but sometimes from other lifetimes. But that is what happened when I prayed to the Lord for purification, like a boil getting popped and oozing everywhere. It's a messy process, but it ends in cleansing happiness. The rage slowly left my body. It is still leaving. I promised my father that she wouldn't tell. I... <laughs> Oh, God, I'm getting myself in trouble here. I'll just say it. Go ahead and sue me. My six-year-old self is saying, I promised my father that she, quote, my six-year-old self wouldn't tell. 
stop it, Daddy, stop it. Don't do it, don't do it. He strangled her to death right in front of me. She was going to come over to my house. We were going to play cooking and dress up that day. My heart feels broken. I wish it were so that I would stop feeling. I don't want to feel. It really hurts. I'm good, in, I'm good at hiding it. I go around the house and just do the mommy wifey thing on automatic. The other thing was that I uncovered a mantra. I don't even know if it means anything. Some Pat Vignaya Vignesh or whatever it sounded like, which, which indicated to the adults to whom the trauma programmed kids said it to, that the child was, quote, safe and wouldn't remember anything after, quote, it was done to them. I saw a whole bunch of kids with different colored hair all strung together with this mantra of forgetfulness, the trauma-based mind control programming. There was an Indian man named, well, Dinesh Mahadev. I don't know if that was his real name, but that's the name that came to me while I was in recall. Somehow it was related to Kartikeya Mahadev, who was a politician, a fake Kalima worshiper. He was involved with the child pros prostitution, the white-skinned Hare Krishna subjugation. Here we go. I'm trying not to be sick. The next entry is a month later. December 15th. 2011. My last session had no recall, just intense emotion about Beth and the grief of her murder. Healing happens in layers. There was still so much grief, I stayed back from some social invitations, and this allowed me enough self-time to grieve. I put the fan on in the bathroom to cover the wailing I did it as softly as possible so that the children wouldn't hear. It hurt so badly, my heart burned like a coal, searing its way out of my breast. I had nowhere to turn for relief. I just wanted to die. It's funny, you know, going back over the words that I've written, <laughs> I remember, I remember this grief coming out of my body, you know, and so much of the time you you doubt your sanity you doubt you know am i making all this up am i crazy you know again apparently that's a sign of sanity that you doubt your sanity and you question yourself but how could so much grief come out of your imagination how could it come out of your body so ferociously that like i was gasping for breath i was like i still remember the cold tile floor and the smell of it where that grief was just squeezing out of my heart it really I mean I didn't know a heart could feel so hot and burn like that where it, it really felt like it was going to fall out of my rib cage so I'm grateful that um, that I did have that level of body memory of emotions coming out so physically for me because it allowed me to accept the reality of my experiences that otherwise would have been hard to accept because you know your cognitive mind wants to fight with your body it doesn't want all of what's coming out of you to be true you want to believe the lie you want to believe that everything is okay and um i, I definitely understand people who who uh who choose denial over the reality of what happened because it really is a spiritual warfare to come around right and to heal but there's really no other way because if you don't, you stay stuck here. You have to you have to be true. You have to heal. You have to feel to heal. And I, I um I've said this before and I'll say it again, that the faster you agree to feel, to go to that place in your heart that's so scary and be vulnerable, do the trust fall backwards and trust Krishna or God, however you call him, to catch you the faster that you can come to the other side of your private hell. Because ultimately this whole material world is meant for love. It's meant for reviving our loving feeling 
towards the Supreme Friend, God. And if we, you know, we limp our way through life not feeling, thinking that we're going to protect ourselves with our walls that we build up in our hearts, and shut all our emotions off so that we can be logical, then we will have missed the purpose of this creation and we will stay here life after life. There's no such thing as transcendence without love of Godhead. And if you can't, if you're, if you're stuck in the rules and regulations of so-called religion and you don't genuinely develop divine sentiments, which are the ornaments of Vaishnavas, the sentiments, the loving feelings and the character behavior of a devotee, then you can know that you're doing it wrong. So the nectar of devotion, um, by Srila Rupa Goswami describes all of these different feelings, but we can't get to transcendental feelings unless we agree to at least feel our temporary feelings or so-called material feelings. I see so many um, fake transcendentalists out there. They're going to talk about love of God and chant Hare Krishna and be happy, but they're just miserable bags of avoidance. Because everybody went through the association of the Great Sinister Movement. And at one point, they will have to wake up if, if they're honest and, you know, genuine people. You know, sometimes I think that the, the modern Hare Krishnas are going to be the last to know what really happened. Because they have so much to lose, so to speak. Um, like a dysfunctional family, they, they want to hold on to their denial as if somehow holding on to that denial will stop the inevitable. But it's coming out, this truth is coming out, and the sooner that people accept what really happened, then we can move forward together, we can heal. But we can't heal if you continue to deny it. And that's why the Lord's hand is bringing forward these truths more and more and more. Not to, to hurt your faith, but to heal your faith. This is the greatest spiritual battle ever. This is like the most... This is the most epic spiritual battle of all time. This is Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu delivering all of the fallen souls. Don't you want to be part of this epic battle? Did you really think that the demons weren't going to attack the Lord's general? He was just going to come waltz through the, the capital of Kali and, and they weren't going to infiltrate and do their very best to destroy it from within. I mean, like, where have you been all of these years? Of course he's going to. So we have to do our own healing, our own spiritual work. We have to actually come to the transcendental platform. We have to follow in the footsteps of his divine grace by seeing the character of his sincere devotees, of his sincere followers, and they are out there. I'm sorry, my dear Ritvix, I love you, and you're just going to propound more demon agenda with your emotional decision, which is not based in Shastra not based in reality because look what happened to all of the other great teachers of the past without the living breathing example of a liberated soul of a lover of god we have to keep the lineage alive and we have to step forward in our own humility of boldness as my teacher calls it you have to be bold enough to say yes i will sit at the feet of the Guru Prampara and I will take whatever accountability I need to take for my walk here and I am ready to be the Lord's instrument and be a shining example of how to get the hell out of here. Well, of course, we can be home on the way home. We can live in Goloka Vrindavan right here in the present day Kali Yuga and have our oasis, our spiritual oasis, which was what the temples were supposed to be. but. Now, that's a whole other story. Okay, wow, did I digress. I hope that was helpful, everybody. Let's get back to misery. Okay. Okay, where were we? All right. I had nowhere to turn for relief. I just wanted to die. On the session table, I was aware that I told my father I wanted, to, I wanted him to kill me, too. I hated him. He said if I told anyone, he would kill my little brother, my youngest, his, his own youngest son. And then I was silent. That's what they always did, you know. If you tell, they're going to 
kill so and so, kill this one, kill that one. Of course, the problem with their threats was that they also carried them out. The second part of the session was the upcoming rage. Kamra directed me to sit to hit some pillows, but I was just seething and way too proud to take my emotion out on mere stuffing. I wanted to hear the crunch of bone and see blood flow, specifically his blood. The other day, I was so full of anger, I went looking for our axe to take it out on a dead tree, but I couldn't find it. So instead, I went into the old sailboat where all our stuff is stored, rotting in all of the rain, and threw it all out. I ended up cleaning up the whole yard with a fierce vengeance. It was helpful. Constructive rage venting. This past week and a half, my stomach is just not digesting. My indigestion is my desire not to live. Deep down, I know this. I barely breathe either, very shallowly. I am cold most of the time from the inside out. Today, early morning, I woke up at 3.30 a.m. I was finally going to get my joppa done early. Yes, so rewarding. I sat down and felt restless and angry. I did my core energy centering exercise, entrained with the roots of Srimati Tulsi Devi. I learned later that I'm not supposed to do that. She is a goddess after all. It is not appropriate to do so, but at the time I didn't know this. I was looking for shelter. I wanted to see if I was in proper alignment and my palms came together in prayer and out came a rush of tears and grief. This time it was about Matthew, the little boy who was murdered at the campfire. I kept repeating the words, don't make me do it, don't make me do it, don't make me do it. The image of a thick, short metal pipe kept coming to me. It was aluminum and slightly bent toward the end. It was hollow. Interesting, my heart beats faster just writing this. My father blames me for having, quote, having to kill the boy. The message was, don't tell or this will happen to you or your loved one, and it will be your fault. I guess it worked because I am at the age of 35, just now retrieving any consciousness of it. I wonder how long it will take for the others to remember, if they remember at all. How many will commit suicide before they know why they feel drawn to, before they act on the programming deep down? See, and my tummy is f of food is turning into a lump. Another body confirmation. Don't tell me I am making this up thumping heart, dizzy, and a stomach ache and a tight ball because of writing this down, I feel like crying again. I spent the whole early morning hours just crying and crying. I, I didn't chant. I hid on my favorite rocking chair under a sleeping bag and tried to remember what was worth living for again. I did not take the boys to school today. I just couldn't move. I spent the whole day in bed and just woke up at 5 p.m. I spoke to my neighbor, Harinam, who is recently back from India. She asked me about my healing progress, and I shared it with her. She instantly understood, as eight out of ten of her breath work clients. Oh, you know what? I misspoke. Okay, so no, no, no. It was not Harinam. It's my other neighbor. It's been a long time since this one. So, I spoke to my neighbor, who is recently back from India. She asked me about my healing progress, and I shared it with her. She instantly understood, as 8 out of 10 of her breathwork clients have been sexually abused. Tis the norm in Kali Yuga. At least at present, it is still unacceptable in public opinion. Soon it will be like homosexuality. So what? It is just my preference. It is natural. It's normal. Why, what does anyone have to say about it if they do? discrimination. You know, I wrote this back in 2011, and here we are in 2024. And astonishingly, you know, my sarcastic joke here is actually a fact. I mean, with the whole LGBTQ plus flag, there's also a flag for um, 
minor attracted people. It's like, oh my God, it's like beef. You know, instead of saying I kill cows and eat my mother and father, you know, like a real MFR, we'll rename it beef or pork. Now, instead of saying I um, sexually manipulate and abuse children, we're going to call it minor attracted. Yeah, you guys, or uh, uh, instead of saying I just chopped up and you mutilated the child within my womb, we'll call it abortion, right? You got to rephrase things so you can have some self respect, you know. Okay, so here we are. The guy who was one of the first to start the cover-up, the phony science operation called the False Memory Syndrome Foundation, actually professed to do something like this. He belonged to the Men and Boys Love Club. Imagine that. A self-professed pedophile as part of this organization, and they have the audacity to continue as if they are upstanding people with honorable intentions. Sorry about the rant. It's just, ah! When will the day come when I will have taste for chanting the holy names? At least a desire. I fiercely want to leave this world. Last week, my three-year-old lost the tip of his finger. He and his brothers were playing near a hydraulic pallet mover at a paint store and somehow his finger got under the wheel while I was picking out paint colors. They were playing. When I saw the tip of the bone sticking out, I almost passed out. I immediately put him back on my breast to nurse him even though he had just been weaned. It was the only thing that would make it all better and then we rushed to the hospital. He is healing now. He is braver than I was. The doctor who put one stitch in his little finger said he had never seen such a brave child. He didn't even cry, not even when three anesthetic needles literally passed in and out of his finger. I was the one fighting nausea and going to pieces silently inside. My little warrior man, I'm so sorry. Mommy wasn't paying enough attention. The finger completely regenerated a new tip thanks to healing bentonite, mon montmorillonite bentonite clay. I did packs every day and night. God made us out of dirt, apparently, and it turns into skin. I watched it happen. It even worked for another little girl who was scheduled for plastic surgery on her face due to a dog bite. I told her mother about our clay victory. The doctors were amazed at the results and canceled the surgery. It just wasn't needed anymore. All glorious clay miracles. It works for literally everything. Yes, I always have clay in my home and we put it on all sorts of things. So there's a great book called The Clay Disciples if you care to look it up. But um, yeah, how could all of nature be wrong? But the trauma of the accident and the hospital visit left me reeling. I came home that night, put my boys to bed, and let out a gush of emotion. It was a trigger for many past traumas. What I discovered was that the worst part of the whole thing for me was that I had a moment when I could have stopped the boys from messing around in the store, and I didn't. If only I had done something differently, then he would be okay. If only I had done something differently, those friends would still be alive. That is what is coming out now. The guilt and the feeling that I could have changed things if only, if only, if only I was in control. Of course, I know that my fathers and others in the group purposely blamed the murders on whoever they were trying to F up, specifically me in that moment, to keep me quiet. It's it's a method they have. They, they manipulate you with absolute unbelievable mind effing torture to believe that the person that they are satanically ritual killing is somehow or other your doing your idea and your fault so that when and if you ever remember anything about it before that memory comes up you will have so much guilt and so much shame and so much everything negative that it just will never come out and therefore it's like a self burying memory 
So it uh, only by the, the, the mercy of the Lord was I able to come out of this and be a soul and not hold on to all of that programming and all of those hellish, hellish messages that kept all of this stuck in my system. But that's, you know, that's been the experience of millions and millions and millions and millions of people around the world who have unfortunately been victims of um, multi-generational satanic ritual abuse, which is extremely common. People don't think that it's not. I mean, look at what's going on in our world around us. So many Manchurian candidates are being forced to do horrible things, you know, starting wildfires, you know, shooting people and People don't start off as monsters. They're made into monsters through these methods. And the Lord has come to deliver these people from their satanic, multi-generational families. Anyone, any soul who wants to come out of it can by this method. And I believe that is why I also went through this walk so that I could, by my, my teacher's mercy, by the Lord's mercy, I can, I've come out the other side. And I really do believe that anyone who wants to surrender to God can come out this other side healed whole loving yourself loving God loving humanity because really that is our nature that is our nature and all of these horrible horrible things are a deep 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 misunderstanding and envy of the Lord that that can be changed it's a decision it really is all right here we are of course I know that my father and others purposely blamed the murders on me to keep me quiet. So I am carrying that around too. Standard issue mind programming. Tell the kid the horrible incident incident is all their fault and they believe it forever. Keeps them damn quiet. Sick too. If they don't choose to face the pain and heal, they in turn become the abuser. And the cycle continues. It takes a whole heck of amount of courage to heal. But it means everything. Hare Krishna, Jai Shila Prabhupada, all glories, all glories, all glories to the Sankirtan mission of Shri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Param Vijayate, Shri Krishna Sankirtanam. I encourage you to face your demons and to love yourself. You are a soul. You are not the doer of activities that are in actuality carried out by nature. To follow the Lord's instructions is obedience. Obedience is the beginning of love. We are instructed to love the Lord with all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy mind, in all ways. And in order to love God, we have to love ourselves. And we have to come out of the self-hatred that is so much a part of Satanism. They want you to be separated from who you really are, a part and parcel of the Lord. And because of their envy, they want to, they want to somehow rather get in between you and the Lord. And the only way um, they're able to do that is if you let them, if you identify with the guilt, the shame, the grief, all of that stuff that is the material world, especially in this dark age and through this healing modality of transcendence, of self-love, through real knowledge, realized knowledge, this process of Krishna consciousness or God consciousness, one can heal from the darkest of evil and love oneself and liberate the world, liberate everybody else. Do you really think that the puppets of the Satanists, all of Hollywood, all of the newscasters, all of the newscasters, the spellcasters, isn't it just like all of these these leaders, like Srila Prabhupada said, you know, the Rakshasas, Rakshasa means man eater, you know, these shape shifting demonic creatures. Do you he said they think that they will be happy by eating their own sons? but they will not be. These people are miserable. They're power hungry. They're, they're doing all of these horrendous, horrible things, trying to fill their God-shaped hole in their heart with power. And they're constantly afflicted by fear and lust and envy and lamentation. And they, they, they cover themselves in so many different ways, but they're not happy. They're not free. But we are. We are. And I invite you to this journey, this great victory, this great victory of the Holy Name. Hare Krishna, thank you for watching. I appreciate all of your love, your comments, and encouragement. It means a lot to me.
take care. Thank you.